It is the slowest of all places. A space where time has no measure and speed no meaning. It is not a place he would have liked. Yet here in Greenfield, Wisconsin, Alan Kowicki lay at the bottom of a humble headstone, the name small, but the life much larger. This was a guy bucking all the odds. From the very beginning, he was going to do this thing his way. And from the very beginning, everybody said, no, you can't do it that way. And yet, he persisted. Nobody really believed in Alan as far as um, his goals, where he wanted to be and how he was going to get there. From the time Alan Kowicki left the dairy lands of Wisconsin, he was different. A college graduate, an engineer, a northerner, in 1985, he drove south to start his own Winston Cup race team as driver and owner. He was greeted as an oddity and an outsider. He was like the first guy that I ever saw that came in with a briefcase. And a lot of people just didn't quite understand that. I don't know how many people really took him seriously. Starting your own team from scratch with virtually nothing and trying to make it a NASCAR, of course, is a high-risk proposition at best. And I don't think anybody really thought he would succeed. His quick success surprised the sport. In 1986, Kowicki was Rookie of the Year. Two years later, he won his first race, and his trademark, the Polish victory lap, was born. There is Alan going down the backstretch the wrong way on the track. <laughs> that victory lap there is something I had thought about for a long time, and I wanted to do something special and never be another first win, and I just wanted to give him something to remember me by. <laughs> by 1992, Kowicki had won twice more. His race team had earned respect. Earning a championship was another matter. He would have been considered a dark horse, at best, going into the 92 season. Oh, yeah. Ask, uh, ask any reporter today, and they'll tell you he was in their top two or three list. Ask any reporter at that time, and they'll tell you he wasn't even in their top 40 list. When Kowicki crashed at Dover with six races left to go, he was 278 points behind. So began one of the greatest comebacks in racing history, finishing fifth at Martinsville fourth at Phoenix, second at Charlotte. By the final race at Atlanta, Kowicki trailed overall leader Davey Allison by just 30 points. Folks, we are entering one of the most exciting races ever in Winston Cup racing. The green flag waves and the Hooters 500 is underway. Davey Allison needed to finish fifth or higher to clinch the cup title. It was not to be. Once we knew Davey was out completely, we knew for sure we had a, a legitimate shot at this. With 75 laps to go, it was now a two-car race for the championship between Kowicki and Bill Elliott. I'm looking at two guys right now trying desperately to win a race and a championship. Winning the race was one goal, but leading the most laps was also crucial. It carried a five-point bonus, points both drivers desperately needed to win the overall championship. He knew what the point situation was. We didn't even have to tell him that if we lead the most after to finish second, we could win. And he knew that. Running out of gas, needing to pit, Kulwicki stayed on the track for one extra lap as the race leader. Well, stays out there. Yeah, he does. But he can't run out of gas down the front straightaway. He'll lose everything he runs out now. It was an enormous gamble, and it paid off. Bill Elliott, if he finishes his way, he can't win the championship. Alan Kulwicki is coming off of corner number four. Kowicki would finish second, but with those five bonus points, he won the championship by the slimmest margin in NASCAR history. He celebrated his greatest moment the only way he knew how. And guess what? He's going to do it again. Six years ago, I was just a little guy with a dream that moved down south with a, a pickup truck and a trailer. After running a few NASCAR races and dreaming about it for 10 years, I thought, well, Maybe I was ready to take a stab at it. I hope that when 1993 is over, that uh, the people at Winston, the people at NASCAR, and the competitors all look back and say, we were proud to have him represent us as our champion. Thank you. But Kowicki's reign as champion was over, just five months later. On April 1st, 1993, a plane carrying Kowicki and three others to a race in Bristol, Tennessee, crashed on approach to the airport. There were no survivors. It was a nightmare, and 
you were hoping that you could wake up and it would, you know, you're not really experiencing this. You see an individual succeed as Alan succeeded. He's on top of the world. And you really don't think anything bad's gonna happen to him. And all of a sudden it's gone. I mean, just gone, just like that. The following day, Kawiki's racing team left the track. I've been around racing a long time, and I've lost a son in, in the sport. But I think the saddest thing I've ever seen at a racetrack that I was at, that I was physically at, was Alan's truck leaving Bristol, Tennessee. I mean, we just sat and cried, man. How, how he'd walk up behind you and you could uh, feel his presence, you know, that was, uh, that was missed a lot. So his name is remembered in stone, but also in bronze, etched in history. History will remember him as that last owner, driver, independent, who was able to conquer, you know, the clown Mount Everest and stick his flag in the top of it. Alan Kowicki proved that someone with talent and determination and intelligence and spirit can do in NASCAR what most people say cannot be done. He can do it his way. <laughs>